Okay. So in theory, you can achieve anything you want in America as long as you work hard enough, but however in reality, this isn't the case. Uh, this is especially true for people of color. You could work as hard or harder than someone else and not achieve the same things that they do. But in America, everybody's supposed to be equal. Everybody's supposed to have equal um, opportunities and be on equal footing. So what exactly could be holding us back? And the answer is systemic racism. So uh, in this speech, I'll be focusing on systemic racism towards African Americans. And uh, it's my claim that systemic racism towards African Americans is prominent today. But before I begin, I must uh, define uh, systemic racism. It's defined as uh, practices or policies that put people of a certain ethnic group at a disadvantage. Now this is different than the racism we usually think of when we hear the word. Uh, when we hear the word racism, we usually think of uh, the KKK or lynchings or maybe Jim Crow. But this racism is much more subtle and manifests itself in different ways. Now I'll be showing how it manifests itself in, uh, through discrimination in the housing market, through poor school opportunities, um, through mass incarceration, and through uh, police brutality. So for my first point, I'll be showing how African Americans are discriminated against in the housing market. And on average, prospective black renters are shown less, how, um, a less amount of property than prospective white renters. And uh, according to a study done by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, Overall, black prospective renters were presented 11% fewer rentals than whites. And um, it's not only the lack of property that um, black people are shown, but also the rate at which they're denied loans. Their denied loans almost like, uh, at a higher rate than any other ethnic group. And this was found by a study done by Zillow, which is a real estate company in 2016. And they found that nearly 21% of all um, of black applicants were denied a loan, while only 8.1% of whites were denied a loan. Though the study didn't mention their economic standings. So um, this inherently puts people of color, um, specifically black people, at a disadvantage because they're not going to be able to invest in property, which is an important thing. Now for my second point, I'll be concerning school opportunities. Now school opportunities are very important as they allow a student to really think of what they might want to do when they graduate uh, from high school or uh, find out exactly who they are. And uh, the opportunities come in many different ways, uh, ranging from certain classes being offered or certain technologies being available. Um, they also enhance a student's uh, learning and lead to a quality education. So. Um, there was a study done called the Nation's Report Card, Trends in Academic Progress, which shows that only 33% of, of, of high schools with a high black enrollment offer a course in calculus. This is compared to the 56% um, of high schools that offer a course in calculus with a predominantly white um, enrollment. And uh, additionally, Catherine Lehman, who is the chair of the U.S. Commission of Civil Rights, says that students are col of color are often relegated to low quality school facilities that lack equitable access to teachers, instructional materials, technology, and technology support. Now with all these opportunities, this inherently puts uh, black people at a disadvantage since they're not gonna be able to um, receive the quality education that others might and it will uh, affect their uh, almost, uh, how easy it is to get into higher education like university. Now for my third point, I'll be talking about mass incarceration. Now, uh, mass incarceration refers to the vast population in prisons or jails uh, in the United States. Uh, I'll be referring to and providing uh, evidence for the mass incarceration of African Americans. Now, blacks have the highest incarceration rates of any race in America, and uh, they don't commit a greater amount of crimes than uh, anybody else. And uh, furthermore, according to the NAACP, African Americans and whites use drugs at similar rates, but the imprisonment rate of African Americans for drug charges is almost six times that of whites. Now, um, this racial disparity uh, with the enforcement of drug use could explain the mass incarceration. And a good, I, I think a good uh, example of this would be the war on drugs, which uh, made um, the population of US prisons skewed uh, towards a higher population of black inmates because they have more heavily enforced the, um, the um, and uh, they, made, they made the sentence higher for uh, charges of crack cocaine compared to uh, 
regular cocaine, which was predominantly a poor black man's drug. Now, for my fourth and final point, I'll be talking about police brutality. Now, there are uh, a lot of cases that um, provide evidence that police brutality towards African Americans is real. For example, there's cases such as Rodney King or Tamir Rice or Eric Garner. Now, this is uh, very unfortunate because it, it uh, means that African Americans always have to live in a constant fear of uh, police brutality. And uh, there's actually a study done in 2018 out of all the people who were killed by police in 2018. Black people were three times more likely to be killed by the police. Now, uh, these kind of uh, statistics damage uh, security and safety that one might feel when the police is, uh, are around. When, in reality, they're supposed to protect you and that's, uh, you're supposed to feel safe. So in conclusion, systemic racism towards, towards African Americans is prominent today. I proved this was the case by showing how it manifests itself through discrimination in the housing market, through the declining of loans and the amount of property showed, it manifests itself through uh, poor school opportunities, with schools not offering uh, certain classes or uh, having um, essential technology that leads to a quality education, and uh, how it manifests itself through mass incarcerations with blacks receiving punishment more than whites for committing the same crime, and through police brutality, how a black person is much more likely to be killed by the police when they're supposed to be equally protected. Now, I hope you agree with me after the evidence I, get, I uh, provided, and thank you. All right, the proposition's clear at the beginning. There's a good preview of what the secondary claims are going to be, and I think that there's plenty of controversy on these kinds of issues, so uh, you seem to be good over there. Uh, the structure material in the body of the speech, you did a nice job signposting points as you got to each of those things and trying to explain each of them as you uh, present them. I thought on the first point on the housing issue that you had some good statistical information. Uh, the inference that housing is closely related to other economic uh, measures of security success or um, you know, the ability to accomplish something, I think you need to have a little bit more information about that. Um, the, uh, there might also be some information about uh, uh, homelessness, for instance, that might support your position. Um, you know, the, the fact that uh, somebody's offered 11% fewer uh, places to look at, what's the consequence of that? Is there, does that mean that they don't find a place to live or that they have to pay a higher amount of money uh, or that they're kept out of particular areas? See, that's, I think there's a step that's missing here that would explain why that, that, is, why that particular point is important. Um, the, the one piece of evidence that you had from the commercial site talking about the number of people who were turned down for a loan uh, admittedly, it doesn't include what their economic situation was, so that makes that a little bit hard to evaluate uh, since there is often a correlation between uh, race and poverty. That may, in fact, be the real situation there as opposed to it being a racial issue. It's a poverty issue. Maybe you can make the argument that poverty is another example of that systemic racism, but then you'd have to have an additional point in your supporting structure. Uh, the um, the education issue, I think, is an interesting one. Uh, you're a little dependent on the availability of calculus classes to support that particular point. Uh, you did have a more general statement about the lack of quality of the schools in uh, areas where people of color are being served. I think that's a good general piece of information. Um, like I said, I think additional reinforcement on that would help, but I think you explained that point pretty well. And then the mass incarceration issue, I seem to remember having this conversation with you, you know, the, uh, you're, you're kind of measuring the one rate as the measure of incarceration. This is the, the drug issue. Uh, I, I do think you can find some information that shows that uh, drug issues are the primary thing that put people in the jails, in the prison system, and I think that that would maybe make your argument a little bit more relevant on that particular point. Uh, and then the uh, police uh, shooting issues, or the p police brutality issues, I should say, because you use uh, shooting or uh, being killed by the police as the measure there. Um, 
you know, some of the examples that you presented, uh, uh, Rodney King and Rice and Gardner, I don't, you know, the, the King example I know is, you know, 30 years old almost at this point. And so it's, uh, you know, a little bit problematic. I, you want more contemporary examples. Uh, the Rice one is also a number of years old. I'm not sure uh, the Gardner case that you're referring to is in the last couple of years. It seems like it probably is. So you, I think a little bit more information in that category would be helpful. I thought you had a very good summary at the end of the speech, and you generally do a nice job speaking to the audience, so that enhances your ethos quite a bit. All right, thank you. Thank you. Feel better, okay? <laughs>